Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video, I'm just going to be giving a little guide on what you need to buy if you're trying to mine Ethereum and how you can make an Ethereum mining rig. So I'm just going to go through all the different components that you're going to need to purchase and how you can set them up. Uh, and then I'm also just going to show you kind of what I started off doing so that you can get an idea. All right, so my first mining rig, I'm going to put a picture up here on the screen right now. I only had two graphics cards and I was mining at about 40 mega hash per second, which I mean isn't that much, but just for starting out is what I want to do. So now I'm going to be showing you a video I wish I had watched before I kind of set up this mining rig. So I could have saved a bit of money and I also could have just had a better mining rig in general. All right, so let's get started right away with the hardware. Uh, so we're going to need obviously everything that you need in a computer. And the first thing is the motherboard. So I mean, the motherboard, uh, as much as it is important it's really not that important uh, pretty much any H series motherboard will do as long as it has the right socket here so LGA 1151 and then it supports DDR4 really you're just looking for one of the cheapest ones that you can get and the important thing here is to look at the amount of PCI slots it has uh, so you can see here it has one two three four five six PCI slots which is great which means we have room for expansion in the future or we can support up to six graphics cards there are some motherboards that support uh, a lot more PCI slots, so they have like 10 or 12, like ridiculous amounts like that. But if you're just starting out, you don't really need that many PCI slots. Okay, so that's the first thing to look for when you're getting a motherboard. Pretty much the socket, the RAM, and then the amount of PCI slots. So the amount of PCI slots is definitely the most important. And then the next thing we're going to look for is a processor. Really here, I just picked out the cheapest Intel Celeron processor I could find. It's a two-core processor, um, does the job. I mean, you don't really need anything... Super great as long as it supports the amount of PCI lanes, uh, then you're good to go. So pretty much any Intel Celeron processor, if we're going to be using this board, so LGA 1151, then we need a 6th gen or a 7th gen processor. Alright, the next thing, a stick of RAM. Really, I just picked out the cheapest RAM I could find on Amazon right now. Uh, this one's $47 just for a 4 gig stick. You don't need anything more than 4 gigs because uh, what's going to be doing the power for your computer is the graphics cards. Alright, so that's pretty much it for RAM. Uh, graphics card. So this is definitely the most important decision you're going to make when you're getting an Ethereum mining rig. Now depending on your budget uh, and on how many graphics cards you want, this decision may be different. So this is the one that I recommend here, uh, especially if you're trying to go for a mid-level to high range mining rig, you're going to want to get a GTX 1070. Um, that's my personal opinion. It's the best bang for your buck in terms of hash rate. Uh, and you can go check out my other video, which I'll put a link up to now, on the best GPUs for mining Ethereum at the current time of 2017. And that relates to the DAG size and how well they're hashing right now. So this card, I think, if I can recall, got, gets about 29 to 30 mega hash per second. And if you overclock using one of the guides I have on my channel, you can get even more. And it isn't too unaffordable either at $550. So you can get a few of those to add into your mining rig. All right, now the next important decision is the power supply. So depending on how many graphics cards you're buying, this may vary. Now, if you're going for four or five cards, especially with the GTX 1070, an 1000 watt power supply will be fine for you. But if you're going up to six cards, you may want to move up to a 1200 watt power supply. Now, this is just because the 1000 watt will power your system if you have six cards, but it's going to be not at its peak performance and you're going to it's not going to be as efficient as if you had um, per se a 1200 watt power supply and another thing to look at here when we look at the power supplies is the rating on it so you're always going to want to look for an 80 plus rating on your power supply and also gold certification or platinum certification now that just tells you the efficiency of the power supply and can save you a lot of money on electricity costs if you go from say a bronze rated power supply to a gold rated power supply uh, and this one here has all your necessary cables. So you're going to want to make sure, uh, since this one is modular as well, it's going to have enough cables to power your graphics card that you get here. And just check the pin connector on the graphics card. In this case, it's an 8 pin connector. So you can see that that one will be sufficient to power 4 or 5 of these cards. Alright, now the next one, this step, 
is really not that important. You just need any hard drive pretty much that you can download Windows onto, or if you're using SOS or any of those other uh, mining OSs that exist, or even Linux. Um, pretty much I just found a random power supply on Amazon, the cheapest one I could find, 60 gigs, one terabyte. If you really want your uh, system to run fast and boot up really quickly, you can get an SSD, but that's really not necessary. Uh, and now this step here. So a lot of people um, don't really realize that you can't just plug in six graphics cards into your motherboard. So like here, you can't actually just put them all into the slots like that. Uh, you need to get PCI risers, especially if you have a ton of different graphics cards. You can see this only has two full-size slots where you could plug two into there, but it's at the point where it could be a fire hazard and a safety hazard if you have too many of them on your motherboard. Uh, so I'll show you, if you saw my mining rig, how the graphics cards were actually suspended. They were above the motherboard, and one of them was attached using this PCI riser right here. So depending on how many graphics cards you get, it's going to depend on how many PCI risers you get. In this case, I just found a six-pack on Amazon for 50 bucks. It's a pretty good deal. I just bought one of them when I did it. I think it was like $14, $15. Uh, and these are really important, and you can plug them into the slots. Uh, so that you can rise. Uh, they're powered, by the way, by SATA cables. You can see here um, in the picture on these SATA power right there. Uh, and yeah, so these are very important. And this is what you're going to plug your graphics card into. Now, also an important thing to realize is that you can actually plug these into not just the PCI Express slots, uh, but the full length PCI slots. So if we look on the motherboard here, you can see there's the smaller slots there and then there's the longer slots. These will actually plug into both of them. So you can use these on the full size PCI slots and that's something to note as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much been my guide for what hardware you need to buy for Ethereum mining. Um, again, if you're just starting off small, I wouldn't recommend getting too many cards. If you just want to get a feel for it, maybe get one card, two card, whatever you think you can afford. And you can go ahead and calculate how much money you're going to make. Um, if you just go to, I think if I just look it up, Ethereum mining profitability calculator just like that um, and then you can plug in your hash rate and power consumption and you can just calculate how much you're going to make per year per month per day uh, etc on there so you can see how much profit you're actually going to gain and the payback period on each of these cards if you want to learn more about graphics cards uh, and the best ones for ethereum mining go ahead and check out the video uh, on my channel for best gpus for mining ethereum and say you already have a mining rig uh, and you want to overclock your cards i also have a guide on how to do that for both amd and NVIDIA cards on my channel. So that's been it for this hardware guide. Uh, all the links to these parts are in the description below. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe, and I will see you again in another.